Welcome to the channel Physics Made Easy in the Physics Sample Paper CBSC Board Class 12th. Today we will discuss Section C. In the Section C there are 9 questions. Each question is of 2 marks. I will discuss each and every question. So, stay connected till end. Look the first question, question 17. Draw a level diagram to show the image formation in a refracting astronomical telescope when the final image is formed at infinity. Write the expression for its magnifying power. You know in the telescope it is used to see the distant objects. So, the objective lens of the telescope is of larger diameter. So, that it can collect large number of rays they are coming from infinity. Look I have drawn the objective lens. This is the optical center of the lens one ray I have taken passing through the optical center it remain undeviated other ray parallel to it at the as the rays are coming from infinity they are supposed to be parallel to each other I will take only two rays to form the image this ray will be converged and the image is formed somewhat here this is inverted image of the object at infinity do not forget to mark the arrow okay? and also the labeling this is objective lens. Now, this image is formed at the focus of the objective lens and to find the final image at infinity this image should be at the focus of the other lens of the telescope. What is the name of other lens? This is eye lens or eyepiece. It is the smaller lens of small focal length. Its focal length should be here at the same place where at the same point where FO because only then the object placed at the focus of the eye lens will form the image at infinity. First of all you write here E for the optical center of eyepiece and this is FE point same point and at the same distance this distance you mark the Fe another focal point for the eye lens. Look now one ray parallel to the principal axis will pass through Fe you know, parallel to the principal axis ray passes through focus other ray from the object this one this image from the objective lens is the object for eye lens. So, from this another ray it will pass through optical center of this lens and it will remain undeviated. So, as you draw with the help of scale and pencil you will find these two rays are parallel and you know parallel rays where do they meet at infinity as it is given the condition that final image is where at infinity. So, in this way you do the proper labeling and eye lens or eyepiece this is the figure. What is the formula for magnifying power? Simple minus FO upon FE. Okay. In this way you have to solve the question. See the question 18. In this question what do you mean by an ideal diode? First part you know ideal diode is a p-n junction when it is forward biased then it behaves like the perfect conductor and when it is reverse biased it behaves like the perfect insulator. Learn this definition. In the second part write the biasing in figure A and B. Look here in this figure this arrow is P and this is N. So, P is relatively higher potential at the higher potential as compared to N. P is at 7 and N is at 5 not only plus and minus terminals of the battery connected with PN junction makes the forward biasing and reverse biasing. Normally you learn that P positive and negative forward biasing and reverse of this reverse biasing, but learn here in this figure both are at positive potential, but P is relatively at higher potential than as compared to N. So, this is forward biased. What is this figure? P is earthed and this n is at positive earthing means its potential is 0. So, p is at relatively 
lesser potential than potential of n which biasing n is positive p is at lesser potential reverse biasing okay so in this way you will have to assume which type of biasing is made in pn junction then proper answer you can give in the question 19 it's very interesting question in the cross magnetic field that is magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of paper inward a circular conducting loop and rectangular conducting loop both are taken out with the constant speed v you have to find that in which loop do you expect the induced emf will remain constant during the passage out of the field region you know what is the formula for induced emf as you know emf is d phi by dt then how will you solve this question phi is magnetic flux if you write here that induced emf its magnitude is given by d phi by dt finally this can you you write here b into d a by dt okay b is the magnetic field a rate of change of area look here this d a by dt for this value in case of circular loop if this is coming out then for, with the constant velocity then this area then this area then this area you know area is different d a by d t is different so e will be different is it or not look in case of rectangular loop the same area strip will come out so d a by d t will remain same so e will remain constant what is asked here and which figure look what will be your answer in the rectangular loop so in this way you will solve see the next question question 20 a lens forms a real image of an object for this lens uv graph is shown here in the figure what is the nature of the lens using the graph find the focal length of this lens look the graph it is shown here that at 20 cm value of v u is also 20 first of all lens forms a real image of an object which lens forms the real image you know convex and concave there are only two lenses you have in your syllabus then concave lens never forms the real image so which lens will be convex lens first part convex lens second part for u that is the object distance from the lens v image distance from the lens if both are same do you know that at which point in front of lens an object is placed that at the same distance the image is also formed you know the positions that is c 2f you can find from the graph that for u equal to v equal to 20 cm cm what can you write this is 2f as 20 cm therefore what will be f f will be 10 cm and you know the relation for 1 by f equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u and u is negative then what will you put here this 20 and 20 this will become 2 by 20 this 1 by 20 minus minus 1 by 20 it will become 2 by 20 which implies that f is 10 cm directly by knowing the position of the object and image you can solve or using the formula okay come to the choice question, question. in the figure 1 and 2 are two monochromatic rays the refractive indices of the glass prism for these rays are 1.35 and 1.45 respectively trace the path of these rays after entering through the prism look the figure ray 1 and 2 they are perpendicular to the surface ab so they will enter directly and come at the surface ac so if this is the surface ac from first ray 
if you, if you draw first ray then first ray will enter and from a to this point ac surface it will come at the angle of incidence how much look this is 45 those these two angles are given 45 then this is 90 this will be 45 i have drawn normal because angle of incidence is the incident ray makes angle with the normal so what is angle of incidence i1 if you write here then i1 is here 45 for the ray 1 what about the refractive index value given 1.35 for a glass prism you should know this ideal relationship mu equal to 1 upon sin c and for the for a glass prism this value of critical angle for tir to take place for critical angle for a glass prism is 45 degree so what will be mu mu will be root 2 or 1.41 so, if, if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, only then TIR take place total internal reflection. What is here? Angle of incidence is 45 degree and you know the mu and C relation inversely. For the ray 1, refractive index is given 1.35 which is less than 1.41. It means that for this value of mu the c will be more more than 40 more than 45 degree what is here i1 is 45 critical angle will be more so i1 will be, will be less here c1 will be greater than 45 so what will happen angle of incidence is less than critical angle so simple refraction will take place what about the ray 2 since it's value for the refractive index is 1.45 which is greater then its c will be c2 will be what less than 45 and for c2 you know the angle of incidence is same 45 degree okay then what happens that this second ray its tir will take place so it will come down like this why tir will take place because I2 is 45 which is angle of incidence for the second ray it is greater than the critical angle so TIR will take place and it will come at this surface BC normal to it so it will go out from the BC perpendicular to it. So in this way first ray path simple refraction second ray TIR. Next question question 21 1 meter long conducting rod rotates with an angular frequency of 400 radian per second about an axis normal to the rod passing through its one end. The other end of the rod is in contact with the circular metallic ring, a constant magnetic field of 0 0.5 tesla parallel to the axis exits everywhere. Calculate the EMF developed between the center of the ring. How will you calculate the EMF? You know EMF is given by the, its magnitude is d phi by dt and this phi is b a. So, this will be b into d a by dt rate of change of area per second. Let the length of the rod is l which rotates n revolutions per second. How will you write this d a by dt? Look here this b into what is area if rod length is l then you write pi l square l is the length of the rod and it is given 1 meter it is rotating continuously at the metallic ring this is the metallic rim magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane everywhere so emf is induced so, area will be pi L square and n revolutions per second. So, 1 upon T. So, you will write here n. How to write the expression by reading the question? You should learn it. Only then you will be able to solve quickly. Look, how will you solve this? 
you write here this b divided by 2 multiplied by 2 and you write here is 2 pi n together then l square what is 2 pi n why we have written this because 400 radian per second is the angular frequency and angular frequency is 2 pi n so to bring this angular frequency in this expression division and multiplication by 2 has been done so what is the expression here now half b this omega l square all the values are given you can put here what will be the emf this half into 0 0.5 into omega 400 into this l square 1 meter so what will you get here half into 0.5 into 400 this will be 200 and 200 half will be 100 volt in this way you will solve in the question 22 the energy level diagram for any element is given for the atom of any element read the question here in the figure which one of the level transition will result in the emission of photons of wavelength 620 nanometer this is small n is nano how will you solve this question many transitions are given to save time you know the energy emitted during the transition is given by e equal to h c by lambda then this energy is energy difference of any two levels so if lambda is given put here the value find the difference then see which two energy levels in between them which is the proper transition look here h is Planck's constant so 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34 c is the speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 and upon this lambda 620 into 10 to the power minus 9 you will get this value in joules since the energies are given in ev what will you do how to convert joule in ev you will divide it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 that is charge of electron 1 ev is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule so what will you get here after solving this you will get 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules and if you write in ev then 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 this will be 2 ev okay then minus 1 minus 3 look here in between these two energy levels which transition is d then what will be the answer corresponding to d transition this value of wavelength will be emitted so in this way you have to solve see the choice question of uh, question 22 draw a graph between potential energy of a pair of nucleons as a function of their separation indicate the regions in which nuclear force is attractive repulsive you have read in the topic nuclei the graph is plotted between the separation between the two nuclei shown by r at this axis potential energy positive and negative here this is the potential energy axis how the graph is plotted you know this is the shape of the graph this graph says that whenever the one nucleon you suppose at the origin o and other is away from the this nuclei what nucleon what happens when the distance between them is more than 10 to the power minus 15 meter or its multiple then force of attraction x between them what is force of attraction that strong nuclear force and they come closer and closer distance between them decreases then look how the potential energy changes at this point if you see what is this distance this is called r uh, represented by r naught and it is approximately 10 to the power minus 15 meter 
If the nucleon comes further closer, then there is a sharp increase in potential energy. So, to show the reason when the nuclear force is attractive and when repulsive, this is the re before, this dotted line. This reason nuclear force is repulsive and this reason nuclear force is attractive due to attractive nuclear force they come closer and whenever the distance between two nucleons fall appreciably less than 10 to the power minus 15 meter then again nuclear force become repulsive so they move further apart from each other the next question question 23 in this question a figure is shown figure shows a part of complete circuit find the potential at o look here at the point a potential is v1 at point p b it is v2 at o you have to find the potential this c1 and c2 are the capacitor how are they connected capacitors c1 c2 are connected in series and what is the quantity which remains constant in series that is charge this question is based on this fact. Now, look, Q will be constant. Then for first capacitor, you will write C1 delta V. For second capacitor, you will write C2 delta V. Now, you can solve. What will be here? The C1, you will write C1. What will be delta V? From V1 to V. Suppose at this point, the potential is V. At O, what is the potential? V. So, you write here, let at O, the potential is V. Then, you will write here, V1 minus V, okay, V1 minus V. And, what will be here, C2 into this V minus V2, will be or not, this potential difference. How will you solve this, C1 V1 minus C1 V you will write here C2 V2 bring on this side directly I am solving here this C2 V2 ok and C1 V in minus you take on that side. So, it will be V common this will be C1 plus C2 simple what is the V that is the expression for common potential you have read in the topic capacitor here you are getting the same that V will be C1 V1 plus C2 V2 upon C1 plus C2 look how to solve this question. Now, about the choice question, look the second one, this is ok. In the second question, uh, choice question, look the figure is given, in this figure again you have to find the potential at point C. Look if the circuit is given, earthing is here at point B that is earthed, suppose earthing is not made how to solve this question I am giving you the trick simply this EMF is 12 volt and this 2 and 4 they are connected in series then 2 ohm 4 ohm will be 6 ohm in series what will be the current in the circuit 12 ohm upon 6 ohm that is 6 uh, 12 volt upon 6 ohm that is 2 ampere how can you write this expression for V A minus V C simply V A minus V C will be 2 into 2 ok 2 in current will be 2 ampere. So, 2 to the 4 this will be 4 volt and for C and this B then you will write here this V C minus V B if I have not suppose a thing then this will be 2 into 4 that is 8 volt. But in the question, this is given earthing. What is the meaning of this point earth? That is V B is 0. So, if V B is 0, put here, put V B 0. What will you get? If V B is 0, then from this expression, this V C will be 8 volt. At the point C, you will get the expression. So, in this way, you have to solve the question to get the answer that what is the potential at C. See the question 24. 
two charged spherical conductors of radii R1 and R2 when connected by a conducting wire acquire charges Q1 and Q2 respectively. Find the ratio of their charge densities in terms of their radii. It is given when both the spherical conductors are connected by a conducting wire then the charge on first one is Q1 and on the second one is Q2. This radii is R1 and it is R2. It is given. You know when both the conduct, uh, spherical conductors are connected with the conducting wire, both will have the same potential because the flow of charge will take place till the potential of both will become common. So, here this V1 will be equal to V2. What is the formula for V? 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R. So, in place of 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught, I am writing here this V1 is simply K Q1 by R1 and here V2 will be V2 will be K Q2 by R2. V1 equal to V2, it means this equal to this. What can you write here? This Q1 upon Q2 will be R1 upon R2. Now, surface charge density, you know the relation for surface charge density is charge upon area and this will be the 4 pi R1 square for first one and for second one you will write sigma 2 as this Q upon 4 pi r 2 square and what is the charge on the first one q 1 and the second on q 2. What will you get the ratio? You will get here if you write sigma 1 upon sigma 2. So, you will get q 1 upon q 2 into r 2 square upon r 1 square put the value q 1 by q 2 from this expression. What will you get? in place of q 1 by q 2 r 1 by r 2. So, this will be r 1 upon r 2 into r 2 square upon r 1 square. So, finally, you will get the answer as sigma 1 upon sigma 2 will be this r 2 r 2 will be cancelled r 1 1 r 1 will be cancelled r 2 upon r 1. So, in this way this is the ratio of their charge densities in terms of their radii. Now, look the next question. In this question, a potential difference of exists across a copper wire of length L and diameter D. Okay. It is asked that how will the drift velocity affected if potential difference is doubled and d is doubled. You should know the relations in case of drift velocity for potential difference how this drift velocity is related with the potential difference you know V d equal to E v upon m l tau. Learn this relation how to derive. In the theory question, this derivation is also asked. Here, V is double, then simply E, M, L are constants, tau is also constant, relaxation time till the temperature is constant. So, V and V d are directly proportional. If this is made twice, this will also become double. What about D is doubled? You know, current is given by I equal to N E A V D. So, in case of V D you can write here from this expression that V D is I upon N E A. If diameter is double then area will become 4 times and if area will become 4 times then current will also increase in the same ratio it will become 4 times because resistance will become 1 fourth. There will be no change on V d. Learn how to analyze. Listen, 
that d is double more will be the area twice the area means four times the twice the diameter means four times the area four times the area means resistance will be decreased by it will become one fourth therefore the current will become four times this i and a both will increase four times so there will be no effect on vd in this way you have to think and solve